Welcome back everybody, this is Elias back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you TypeScript classes. TypeScript is a great programming language used in uh, many frameworks by default, for example in Angular. Now in this video we're going to be talking about TypeScript classes and I'm going to try explaining each and everything about classes. <music> Let's start by creating a new project for TypeScript. So if you're on a Windows, you can open the command prompt, or if you have a Git bash installed, you can use that as well. So let me just open this, and here I would like to create a new folder for our TypeScript files. Also, I'm gonna type tsc space dash dash version. Now I can see I don't have a TypeScript compiler installed globally, so I'm just going to quickly do that by typing npm install dash g TypeScript. Okay, it's going to install TypeScript globally. Let's initialize our project by using npm init commands. So let's open terminal. I'm going to type npm init. It's going to ask me some questions. I'll leave that package name as classes. Keep pressing enter. And you will have a package.json file. Let's open a package.json file. I'm going to go to explore. And there you go. We have this package.json file. I'm going to install some packages here. So I'll type npm install dash dash save dev TypeScript. Install TypeScript globally, but we can do that locally as well. Once that package is installed, I'm going to npm install dash dash save dash dev that would be nodemon nodemon is a package which will run javascript and keep looking for the changes in the files and once that's done as well we're going to create a new file called app.ts and i will simply create a class so let's type touch app.ts file we have that class i'm going to open that file here let's start by just defining a simple class so type class and then i'll say that would be a person class okay we can have a property here name we can say it's type string and age which has a type of number okay that's a simple class but how do we compile that into javascript on terminal, you type tsc space dash dash version. We can see we have a TypeScript version 3.7.2 installed. So I'm going to use the command tsc space and the name of the file I want to compile. I press enter and you will notice there will be another file app.js. We can run this app.js file using a nodemon. So let's go to the terminal and type nodemon app.js and it's going to keep looking changes for app.js go back to app.ts file and i'm going to create a new instance of a person so i'm going to actually go back inside this first of all to create a new instance of a person class we need to define a constructor function so i'll use a constructor function and here we are going to I uh, give it a parameter, so I'll say name, string as a type, age as number. That would be our constructor function, okay? And inside the constructor function, we can say this dot name equal to name, this dot age equal to age, okay? Let's create a new instance of that, and then we're gonna log that to the console. So let's just do let i'll type my name new person and we give it like a name as always age would be 30 and i'm gonna log that on the console okay let's open it up and you can see nodemon is looking for changes in app.js but actually we need to compile the typescript file because right now if i open app.js it hasn't been compiled yet so what do we do here first of all here actually i found a mistake that has to be a type string okay let's save this file and i'm going to go back to a terminal and we are going to create a new terminal close this 
click on this plus button here i'll type tsc app.ts file dash w dash w flag will continuously look for changes in this file and basically will compile that for us i'll save this file it says found zero errors we we'll look at app.js file as you can see it's been compiled and we go back to our bash one and you can see a person has been logged on the console so if i change that to john save it and you have this compiled and nodemon is actually looking at changes in app.js file okay cool so now we can write our type screen we can see the changes right in the terminal now to create a class you simply use this class keyword and then you define the name by convention the first character of the class should be capital okay here i'm using class keyword giving a name as person we got two properties for person name and age and then the constructor function for the constructor function there can only be one constructor function a constructor function is used when you create a new instance of a class with a new keyword so this line we're doing that i'm simply logging to the console uh away which is like a, a person class instance we can use object oriented concept in typescript as well such as inheritance so we have a class here called person i'm going to create another class which will extend a person class so let's go and create a new class by using a class keyword and i'm going to name this class as student and that will extend person so inside that i'm going to define one property we can say that would be a number type i'm going to use a constructor function and we can say id number and now you can see we got a red lines in the constructor function error here it says super must be called before this now i'm going to create a new instance of a student so we can say let's just say let john equal to new student and here it's asking for id name and age and name and age is basically coming from a parent class called person and i'm going to define here id as one name as let's just say john and then we're going to type 30 as age log that on the console i'm going to type john let's open terminal now you can see we have a new student named john age 30 and id is one next up we're going to talk about a module first public private and protected i want to show you the documentation so when looking at documentation it actually makes it easier to explore more about the current technology that you are learning and documentation is always the best place to go and learn in details and here we have a public private and protected modifiers so i could actually write this code right in this uh, vs code but the reason why i'm showing you is that i want you to go ahead and explore a bit more so let's try understanding what is public private and protected so first of all when you define a property here by default it has a modifier set as public you can define two modifiers private and protected yourself so by default it's public now public means that you can access these properties in the derived clause and also you can actually access that from the instance so here we have a john I'm actually going to type John here and I type dot and you can see I have access to age, ID and name, right? I'm going to go up there and I'm going to make age as private. Let's save this file. I'm going to go come down to John and I'm going to say dot. Now you can see I can only access ID and name. Here, I can access a name and age as well. So, what's the difference between private and protected? 
It says when a member is marked private, it cannot be accessed from outside of its containing class. So here, for example, it's saying class animal private name. They create a new animal instance and it said dot name. It cannot be accessed outside the class because it's set as private. So if I create a new instance of a person, for example, let Paul equal to new person. And I say that's Paul. Age would be, let's just say, 25. And I want to try accessing Paul age property outside. So we say Paul dot age. Now you can see I can't really access that because this is private. Now, to make it accessible outside the class, either I remove this, which makes it public modifier by default, or I type public. Now, if I go down and let's say dot, and now I can access name and age as well. Now, we have a modifier public and private and also protected. But this modifier acts much like as private, but it will let you access the property in the derived classes. Okay, so for example, here I'm using super keyword and I'm accessing name and age, and both of them are public right now. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna change this to as protected. Okay. Let's save the file. We're gonna go and open the documentation and let me see what's going on here. So here, the example the TypeScript documentation has, it has a person class name as protected. We has age as protected. So we got a constructor function and then we say employee extend person and then in the employee it has a private property called department and a constructor function and a super name. Now if I try to access this new instance of an employee and I try to access a name, it's not actually going to let me access that. So given this code, we can access age here, okay? But if I want to access age in poll, let's just say we type poll dot, now you can see I cannot access age property, okay? But if I go inside this derived class, okay, I can access that age property of the super dot. So here I'll go inside a function and I can say move and inside this function, I can simply say this dot and I can see you can access age and ID as well. So here we have a protected and I can access age and ID and name as well. Okay, so you can see it will let you access this in a derived class. But what if I change this to private? Once it changes to private, I'm no longer able to access age because it can only be accessed within this class not in the derived clause, not outside the class. So that's the main difference between protected and private. Next we have read-only modifiers. It says you can make properties read-only by using read-only keyword and read-only properties must be initialized at their declaration or in the constructor function. So basically this will make your property read-only let me give you a demo here. So I'm just gonna remove this and we are going to make this read only, okay? Now I have an instance of a student, so let me just go and try to change this ID on the John. So I'll say John.ID equal to, let's just say 30, okay? Or not, not 30, but let's just say 10. Okay, 
Now, you notice that there's a line here. It's like an arrow. It says cannot assign to ID because it's a read only property. Now, if I remove read only, let's save it. Now I can change the value of ID to 10. So let's open up and here you can see we have 10 as an ID. But I cannot change a read only. So read only. I won't be able to change the value of that because it's only able to read but not able to write to that property of that class. So that's our read only modifier to. Also TypeScript supports getters and setters. Now we can see we have this property as private. Now you cannot access that outside the person class. But we can write a getter for this. So the way you write a getter is by using get keyword and then we can say get age that would be a function and that's going to return a number okay and we can say this dot return this dot age all right let's save this file and i'm gonna go down let me just Go and create a new instance of a first class. I'm gonna remove all of this. So let's just say let p equal to new person. We can name it as John 40. And that's it. Now if I try to say p dot age, it's not gonna let me access age because that's property is actually uh, private. So I'm going to do a console log and instead of accessing p.h, I can access get age. So save the file and now it says app crashed. Let's see what's there. So this expression is not callable. Type number has no call signature. Okay, because this is a getter, so we can simply access that by just defining get age. Okay, let's take a look. And there we go. We get 40 back. Similarly, for setting the age, you can have a setter. The way you define a setter in types of classes by using a set keyword. I can just set age. And then you can say that would not return anything. And it will take as age number type. And then we can say this dot age equal to age. Okay, and there's an error here. It says a set accessor cannot have a return type annotation. Okay, so we don't really need that type there. And let's just go down. And now we can set the age as well. So I can say p dot set age, and we can pass in a 20 as number. And then let's see what happens. So here we have an app crash. There's an error that says. The expression is not callable type number has no call signature okay well what we can do here is just get rid of this callable and we can say equal to 20. let's save it and now we can see we have a 20 as age but if i just comment this out and run the code again we get 40. Now you can see that you can set and get a private uh, properties of the class as well. So this concept is basically encapsulation. Now you might want to check before you, you want to check something before you can set the, the value of an age. So you can use like a if clause. So if let's just say if age greater than 18, then you set the value of age okay so you can have like a check here so these are the getters and setter provided by typescript in typescript we have a abstract classes now when you read angular code you see the a lot of abstract classes there so not a lot of people know about these and they get confused about sometimes okay basically abstract classes are the classes which cannot be initialized directly they must be used in a derived class so here i'm creating 
a new instance of a person class. I want to make this class as an abstract class. So I'll type abstract. Okay. Now, when I assign this person class as an abstract class, see we have an error in VS Code. It says cannot create an instance of abstract class. Okay. But we cannot create an instance of abstract class, but we can actually extend that. Here in a person class, I don't see any error. I'm able to extend person. The abstract class are the classes which cannot be initialized directly, but they can be extended in derived class. So we have a student class which is extending person class. So any classes that you don't want them to be initialized directly, you can assign this keyword abstract before a class keyword and that will make it not assignable or not initializable directly that's pretty much it is about the abstract class and there's some advanced technique which i will uh, create a video later but that's about it guys these are the concepts available in typescript classes now i'm pretty sure that you are very comfortable using class keyword to create a new classes having that properties private public or protected what's the difference between them also about getters and setters for your private properties of the class and how the inheritance work by extending class uh, in a derived class that's about it if you have any question let me know in the comments below if you like the video give it a like and subscribe to the channel and i'll talk to you guys in the next one